Welcome back everyone to 7.2 Trigonometric Integrals. In this video we have a few more theorems and examples to go over with you, including one where we combine uh, integration by parts with trigonometric integrals. So let's get to it. All right, for our first theorem, uh, we want to be able to integrate tangent of x and secant of x. So the claim is we've already done tangent, and it's supposed to be the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus my constant of integration. And the new one here is the integral of secant. And the claim is that it's the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x plus my constant of integration. So we want to go over a proof, right? We can actually, this is a theorem. We should be able to prove it. Uh, you don't have to take my word for it. So let's actually prove this theorem. And the first one is our warm up will be the tangent of x dx. And the claim is we've already done this, uh, and we need to break it up into sine of x divided by cosine of x. And then we just use u substitution. So u is going to be cosine, and then du is going to be negative sine dx. And notice that we have a sine of x dx. So therefore, we can write this as 1 over u, that's my 1 over cosine, and then my sine of x dx is going to become negative du. So now we can integrate 1 over u. 1 over u is supposed to be the natural log of the absolute value of u. We have a negative along for the ride plus my constant of integration. Now u is supposed to be cosine. So we have negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x plus c. And then one of the properties of logarithms is that we can rewrite this as natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x raised to the negative 1, right? That's called the power rule. And then that negative 1 as an exponent, well, that's the same thing as taking the reciprocal, right? So 1 over cosine is going to be secant. And that's the result we were looking for. So there's the proof. We have the, abs sorry, we have the integral of tangent of x dx is actually equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus my constant of integration. Hua. <laughs> All right. So we need to do something here for secant. And there's a trick to it. And the trick takes some time. You need to hang out with this uh, integral for like a week or so. I'm not sure. Uh, and then you'll decide maybe multiplying by secant x tangent x on top and on bottom is a good thing to do, right? This is not obvious. So when you do this, though, and you distribute these things, right? So we have a secant of x. So when I distribute secant of x, I get secant squared x times secant tangent x x, secant x tangent x, sorry, and then the denominator stays the same. The claim is we've done something good here, and we've only really multiplied by 1. So we haven't changed the integral at all. And the good thing that we've done is that if you let u be tangent of x plus secant of x, then we actually have the du. And the du here, right, is, well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and the derivative of secant is secant tangent. Oh, I forgot my x. There we go. And we can see we have that, right? That is the exact numerator. OK. So therefore, this is equal to the integral of 1 over u du, right? I get to trade all that in for du. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus my constant of integration. And then instead of u, I'm going to write, well, tangent x plus secant x. And there we go. That is the proof. We have proved this theorem here. So now we know what the integral of just the normal tangent, the normal secant are. And the claim is this will be useful uh, in a couple of situations. So let's get to one of those situations. I have uh, an example for us. So this example is I want to evaluate uh, tangent cubed of x dx. Now notice that this doesn't really fall into any of our categories because we don't have secant here. So we have to get a little bit creative. OK, so one thing we could think to ourselves is, well, let's get some secants in here, right? So I can get some secants in here, and I'm going to use uh, my property, right? So I have this nice identity that says that tangent squared is the same thing as secant squared minus 1. So let's take tangent squared and 
get in some secants. Okay, now let's go ahead and distribute my tangent. So when I distribute, I have tan x secant squared x dx minus tangent of x dx. Aha! Now that I have these secants, right, I know how to integrate this thing. And thanks to my theorem, I know how to integrate tangent of x dx. Really, I knew how to do this before, but we reminded ourselves. So I know how to integrate both of these things. Okay, well, according to our strategy, right, we're going to let u be tangent of x, du then is secant squared x dx. So this is really just the integral of u du minus, and then, uh, well, we can evaluate this right now. So that's the natural log, the absolute value of secant x plus my constant of integration. When I integrate u, I get 1 half u squared. And let's go ahead and rewrite that right now. That's tangent squared of x minus the natural log, the absolute value of secant of x plus my constant of integration. All right, so we were able to immediately see how, you know, knowing this integral of uh, tangent uh, is useful. Okay, I have one more example for us here. Uh, and this one's a little bit of a doozy. Uh, we're combining two ideas here. You can see that I have an x times a trigonometric function. So what your mind should go to whenever you have x times a trigonometric function, you should think integration by parts. Where u, is, right, so we have that power of x, that u is going to be my x, and then my dv is going to be the rest of the stuff. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so like I mentioned, u is equal to x, so therefore du is dx. dv needs to be the rest of it, so sine cubed x, dx, and therefore v equals, eh. <laughs> Before I couldn't do this, right? I needed 7.2 stuff. I don't know how to integrate really sine cubed. So now that I have 7.2 material, I can integrate this. So let's spend a little bit of time. Okay, the integral of sine cubed x, dx. Well, again, this doesn't really fit into any of our strategies, so let's try to get some cosines in here. So I know sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Now let's distribute. So I get sine of x, and I get minus uh, sine x cosine squared x. And the claim is, is that I can integrate both of these things, right? Because I have a sine to an odd power here. Well, this one's just negative cosine of x. But right, this is sine to the first power, so I can apply the strategy that I have for integrating sine to an odd power. So in this case, uh, cosine is going to be x, so therefore du is going to be uh, negative sine x. And now let's go ahead and throw this in there. Oh, I forgot my dx, yes. Uh, so okay, cosine, uh, that's going to be u squared, and then instead of sine x dx, I'm going to write negative du. So that's why this is changing to a plus here. Okay, so negative cosine x plus, and now I integrate this, just as I would before, one-third u cubed, a.k.a one-third cosine cubed x plus my constant of integration. And now I know what my v is, right? So my v in this case is negative cosine of x plus one-third cosine cubed x. Okay, now let's apply then integration by parts. So integration by parts says that my integral x times sine cubed x dx is equal to uv, so that's x, times a bunch of stuff, negative cosine of x plus one-third cosine cubed x minus the integral of v du. So v, uh, negative cosine of x plus one-third cosine cubed x dv, oops, sorry, the du, so aka just dx as we have from above. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll just rewrite this part really quick. And now we'll distribute our negative and we'll integrate. We'll try to do two things at once. So if I integrate cosine, I get sine. Distribute the negative, so that's plus sine. And then negative one-third. Uh, ooh, this integral is a little bit harder. Mm. But I can do it thanks to 7.2 material, right? So I'm going to turn this one purple really quick. And now, just like I integrated sine cubed, I can probably integrate cosine cubed. So let's get to it. It'll be a little bit different. So cosine cubed x 
Again, we're going to try to get some sines into the mix here so that I can apply my strategy. So I'm going to do cosine x times 1 minus sine squared x dx. Cosine of x, I know how to integrate. That one's not bad at all. And then, okay, minus sine squared cosine of x. Oops, I forgot my cosine. There we go. dx, that I have a strategy for, right? We have cosine to an odd power. When we have cosine to an odd power, we say, oh, well, we should use... Uh, you know, our u substitution, but with u as cosine. Oops, sorry, with u as sine. Ah. And so I'm going to do this one a little bit faster. It's just sine cubed x over 3. You can double check that, right? Take the derivative of it, and you will see that you get sine squared x times cosine x. And now that I can plug in for my purple stuff, right? That's the answer. So instead of this integral, I plug in. Well, I figured it out. It's sine of x minus sine cubed x over 3. So I just plug that in. Let me turn it blue. Move this over a little bit. And now I should probably add in my plus c, right? My plus, my constant of integration. Hua. So we can see that we can actually have problems that require both integration by parts and trig integrals. Okay, so I have one more topic for us to go over in this video, uh, and this is a different type of trig integration. It's when you have uh, sines and cosines with different um, coefficients next to the x's. So I have these three kind of situations, sine times cosine, sine times sine, cosine times cosine, and the claim is we want to use some identities. So if you have sine times cosine, uh, the claim is that there's this nice formula out there, and this comes from the angle addition and angle subtraction formula. Okay, when you have sine times sine, right, and you have different coefficients on the inside, uh, you use a different uh, substitution here, cosine of a minus b minus cosine of a plus b. Again, this comes from an angle addition and angle subtraction formula. And then when you have cosine times cosine, I have one last one. And the claim is, is that, at least for me personally, if I want you to use these on a quiz or an exam, if I'm going to ask a question that requires you to know these, uh, I'm going to at least put these identities uh, as something for you to use. So you don't have to memorize these. You should double check with your instructor, right? If I'm not your instructor, you should double check with them to make sure that they're playing by the same game. Uh, but I think this is a good idea because these ones, uh, I don't know, uh, you'll go crazy trying to memorize these. They're so close. Uh, and they only get really used in this one type of scenario. But now that we have them, let's try to apply them. Okay, so in this case, uh, we have it's sine times cosine. And you can see the insides are different here, 2x and 3x. So let's apply this. 1 half sine of a minus b. Okay, so a is the thing with inside of sine. b is the thing inside of cosine. So a minus b is going to be 2x minus 3x. Okay, plus sine of a plus b. So this is going to be 2x plus 3x. Okay, so this is, let's see, 1 half, I can pull that out, the integral of sine of negative x plus sine of 5x dx. Okay, so when I integrate sine of negative x, right, so that should be negative cosine, but then the chain rule says I need another negative. So that's going to be positive cosine of negative x. And then when I integrate sine of 5x, right, uh, I'm going to have a cosine. I'm going to have my 5x, but I'm going to need to divide by 1 fifth, right? And now this one, the negative doesn't go away. So this is actually negative 1 fifth cosine of 5x. And we can double check, right? If you take the derivative of these things, you get back to where you started. Okay, and let's do one more line just to simplify. I'll distribute this 1 half. And then also cosine is an even function, right? Cosine, we wouldn't write usually cosine of negative x, we'll just write cosine of x. Again, because it's an even function, this is a true statement. And then cosine of 5x, and there we go, plus c. That is my final answer. All right, and I think that's a good place to end it. Let's go ahead, take a quick break, and then you can get started on your homework. I'll see you next time in 7.3.